It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Virginia Westland head field hockey coach, Coach Riley Vandervilt. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Brandon. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching in college field hockey? Definitely. And I think it's a bit, you know, I think it's interesting how I ended up here and ended up, you know, in this role. I had played collegiately. And then, you know, when I was finished with my career, my college coach was a huge mentor and really encouraged me um, to, you know, pursue a career in coaching. And I wasn't sure it was what I wanted to do. Cause I think, you know, a lot of student athletes, right. We give so much to our sport that at the end, we're kind of like, that's all I had to give. Um, but a job opportunity presented itself and it was awesome. And I think just the longer I was in that assistant coach role, uh, my first coaching collegiate coaching job at Salve Regina, University in Newport, I just knew this is where I wanted to be. This is what I wanted to do. Um, and, you know, my my head coaching job here kind of fell in my lap. So I feel like, you know, fate just kind of kept kept bringing me back to this position, to this role. What was that like, obviously, getting to compete in college field hockey for Connecticut College? It was awesome. You know, I think it was great. And I really enjoyed my recruiting process because I was looking at, you know, D1s, D3s, um, and I just love the NESCAC, the NESCAC conference. Um, you know, I think the NESCAC conference for field hockey is prestigious, right? Middlebury has won the last five national championships. Um, the NESCAC field hockey makes up like the top 20, like there's usually 10 of our teams in the top 20, 25 pool every single year. So it's just a tough conference. Um, and I just loved, you know, Connecticut College and I wanted to compete, but I wanted to, you know, have the Division three experience and be a student athlete, but also, you know, have other experiences as well. So, you know, I think I enjoyed playing at the top level of division three, but also got to enjoy other things outside of my sport as well. What was that experience like getting to put on that new jersey and represent the university? Yeah, it was awesome. And I think, you know, it was really fun playing for Connecticut College. I we had a coaching staff change. I was recruited by and played for somebody else my freshman year and then I got a new coach my sophomore year and you know Khan was always you know you know bottom to top of the middle of the NESCAC and so you know when my new coach came in she was like let's go it's like let's change this program let's get us like more competitive let's get back to the NESCAC um get, you know, get us back into playoffs get us into like you know conference play like really came in um hungry and I full on bought into that so you know I think my freshman year I wasn't I didn't get as much playing time, was not as, you know, impact of a player. I think, you know, my sophomore year with my new coach, I got that role. Um, and it was so special and I was so proud. So all the things, it was really special, I think, to put on my jersey and to represent my school. And, to, you know, I think we all bought into a dream. Um, and that was like the best part. During that process, what was that like, obviously going from being a freshman and having one coach recruit you to now learning a whole new coaching staff and a whole new coaching philosophy. Yeah, you know, I think it was, I welcomed it with open arms. You know, I think that you go, you know, I think a lot, I personally, I wanted to play college field hockey because I wanted, you know, a little bit, I was like, all right, I want to play college field hockey. Like, I, you know, I did a good job in high school. Let's see what happens. And then I think you get the right coach who has the right vision and you buy into it and you realize there's a purpose bigger than that. Right. And so I loved my teammates. I loved representing my school. Um, so, you know, I think I bought into what she was selling. It wasn't anything, you know, against the previous program or the previous coach. I think she just came in with fresh eyes and, you know, really, really tried to revamp, you know, what we were doing. And that was exciting for me. What were some of your college accomplishments? Oh, these are good ones. Um, and, you know, I think we bought into, I bought into growing and changing and to building a program. Um, you know, for us to beat 
to, for us to have a bunch of NESCAC wins was huge. My senior year, we beat Wellesley, which was a new MAC team, but they were number 20 in the country at the time. We beat them. We beat Tufts, who was the defending national champion, champions. We went, uh, we beat Colby in overtime. Um, we had a super successful year, my senior year. So I think to, right, you buy in and you believe. And so then to see, you know, your team and your program accomplishing the things that you're talking about, it's amazing. And I remember feeling as a senior, right, like we're leaving these underclassmen with this momentum that we've built and we might not get to, you know, reap the benefits and reap the rewards, uh, you know, that they might get. But I think that that was, it backed up everything my coach was saying that we were now beating these programs that historically we weren't beating um, and to beat ranked programs was huge for us. Um, and to do it a couple of times in a season was pretty awesome too. As a player, what was that like, obviously beating those well-known programs like tough? Um, beating Tufts was, it was unbelievable. You know, I think we beat them one zero. Um, I think we had two shots on goal, one shot on goal, and we just had a, just an awesome game. So I think it was such a special feeling, right? Because, you know, we had heart and hustle and all of those things really, you know, helped us to come out on top that day. But I will never forget, you know, at the end, you want to freak out and like, everybody wants to like celebrate, like, you know, you've won a national championship, but my coach was like, act like you've been there. She was like, don't relax a little bit, right? Soak it in. And I thought that was great advice because you want to act like, to, you know, to be the best, you have to beat the best. And so I think that was a good lesson we learned that day that, all right, it's awesome we beat them, but, you know, we need to act like we expected that to happen. Um, and I thought that was a really good coaching moment. How is that like, obviously, being a two-time captain, both your junior and your senior year? Um, yeah, so I really, I enjoy being a captain very much. Um, you know, I think this is something I talk about with my girls a lot is, you know, I think my first year as a captain, I think the first few months of it, right. I think a lot of kids want to be a captain because it looks good. And you think it's what the best kids get. You know, I think there's a lot of things that come, people think come with being captain. Um, but you know, I think with that role comes a lot of work. Um, and I was always somebody who like, you know, really wanted to have personal relationships with my coaches and all of my teammates. And like that, the relationship piece was so important to me that I would take on a lot. And I remember my senior year being like, do I want to do this again? Or do I just want to play field hockey? Um, and I'm obviously, you know, so glad and so thankful I have those two years, you know, of, of being a captain, having that experience. But, um, you know, I think that that's more than just a title. You know, I think if you do it right, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes of being a good leader. Um, and I think people don't talk about that. So I really try to talk about that with my girls. It's like, yeah, it's great, but here's what I expect. Cause I think we need coaches need those, you know, kids who are leaders and captains to be, to be mini coaches. Of course, leaving college of playing field hockey, what was that like getting your first coaching job on the high school, on the school level for Rocky Hill? Yeah. So this was interesting because I, when I graduated from Connecticut college, I went and I coached at Salve Regina, which was, is a D3 in Newport, Rhode Island, which is just, I mean, gorgeous. That school sells itself. It's so beautiful there. And, you know, I really wanted to be a college coach. And I remember applying to a bunch of full-time assistant jobs and nothing really panned out. And I had spent, you know, three years as an assistant at Salve. And I was like, you know what, I'll go back and get my master's. And while I was doing that, I was getting my master's in mental health counseling. I got a coaching job at Rocky Hill, but I also got to do my clinical hours there. So my supervisor at Rocky Hill was the guidance counselor at Rocky Hill and the varsity field hockey coach. So that experience, Brandon, I'm going to sound cheesy, changed my entire life. You know, I learned so much from that school, so much from Tracy Fairchild, who was my mentor there. Um, and I wouldn't be here if I didn't have that job. So that was awesome. And I think it was so important for me to go back to high school before I took on this job. Um, you know, because I had played at the collegiate level for four years. I had coached at the collegiate level for three more years. And so to go back to high school, right, I'm now coaching kids who maybe haven't played field hockey before. So to go back to the basics was huge. And I learned so much from, from the basics and keeping things simple. You know, I learned, I learned a ton, you know, I think, and, and to go, to go backwards, right. Because I think as athletes, right, we want to be the best. We want to compete at the highest level that we forget that the best teams just do the simple things and do the basics perfectly. Um, so I very much enjoyed my time at Rocky Hill. 
What was your experience like as the assistant coach for the field hockey program at Virginia College, Virginia University? Oh, yeah. So Salve Regina University. It was great. Yeah, I got the job right out of college. Um, and so, you know, I think my my boss there, the head coach, was very patient with me. You know, it's tough to come out of being an athlete and then go right into coaching athletes. And, you know, I was 21 years old, so I was the same age as a bunch of the kids that I was coaching. Um, so I think that that was a really, really interesting process for me on like, you know, boundary setting and like how to be a coach, but how to be relatable as their assistant coach. Um, so I really enjoyed that experience. Salve Regina was a super competitive program. Um, you know, the three years I coached there. So I enjoyed that. We always went to conference. Um, we were able to recruit some really talented players. Um, and like I said earlier, you know, the, the location of that school sold, sold itself. So I learned a lot about how to get coached at a young age and how to recruit. And, you know, I think and it's, you know, assistant coaches are so important. And so I, you know, I enjoyed that role in getting to be the bridge between head coach and players. Of course, during that time, what was that like, obviously going to that school to become an assistant coach versus going back to your alma mater where some of your friends may have still been playing? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I think it's like, it, it's interesting because I think, you know, it's hard to separate. It's, it was hard for me, I think, to separate my experience as an athlete to my experience as a coach. Um, and I think a lot of coaching, you know, my first year was kind of letting go of the fact that I was finished playing. Um, and so, you know, I loved keeping in touch with my teammates at Con who were still playing and giving them advice and checking in during games. But it was hard, right, to watch them play and know that I wasn't a part of it. Um, and so, you know, I think that was a, those were growing pains, right, that I had to transition from this player mentality into the coach mentality. And um, I couldn't play for my teammates, right? Like I had to let Con do its own thing and step back and kind of step into a new role. So it was definitely, you know, I think a lot of growing pains my first year. What was that feeling like becoming the next head coach for Virginia West? It was crazy, Brandon. It was absolutely I um it's kind of an interesting story. So I was at Rocky Hill um coaching high school field hockey. I'd obviously at this point had, you know, six years of assistant coaching experience um, at the collegiate and high school level. And I remember my supervisor, who I spoke about earlier, Tracy, just looking at me one day and saying, you know, you need to be a head coach. Like, you can stay here. This job is yours, but you're ready. Um, and my athletic director at Rocky Hill used to be the assistant field hockey coach at Virginia Wesleyan, um, which is where I'm at, where I am now. And our athletic director had reached out to our athletic director at Rocky Hill about like, hey, do you know anybody who would you know be a good fit, a good head field hockey coach? And my athletic director at Rocky Hill was like, Riley, you should look into that. Um, and I, you know, at the time I was enjoying coaching high school. I thought, you know, maybe I'd be a head high school coach and be a counselor in high school. And I remember talking to my now athletic director, Andrea Hoover, the athletic director at Virginia Wesleyan on the phone. And I was like, I got to Like, she just was so incredible. And I came up for an interview and the rest is history. What was that feeling like, obviously, when you got announced to become the next head coach for Virginia Westland? Really exciting and then really scary. <laughs> really exciting and then really scary. I inherited a bit of a project um, and I... You know, I think it's my, you know, my experience at Connecticut College as an athlete, you know, I think I believe in the dream and I believe in building things and I believe people can build and change and develop cultures. Um, so I was like, okay, I can do this. But every night I think to myself, can I actually do this? Can I do this? Like, okay, we're doing this. So I think um, I was excited, but scared. Um, and, you know, I have a lot of, I have a lot of work to do. Of course, after you got announced to become the next head coach, what were some of the process of changing the culture and making it your own? Yeah. Um, you know, I think as I got to meet the girls who were, you know, that I got to inherit when I became the head coach who had already been here and been, you know, recruited by my predecessor, it was just getting these girls to love field hockey again. Um, and, you know, I think that it was getting them to love field hockey and to buy into me and to have a relationship with me. You know, I really believe that if players have a relationship with coach and they know that their coach cares about them and loves them and wants what's best for them, you know, we can be tough on them. And I'm not 
you know, terribly tough on my kids often, but when I'm tough, I know they hear me because it doesn't happen all the time. And they know um, that I care about them and that I want what's best for the program. So I think it was relationship building. Um, and, you know, I think people just want to feel seen. They want to feel heard. So I think giving space to that and, you know, making sure my girls know that they're my priority and that we're building together, right? This is, it's not mine, it's ours. And, um, you know, I think that that was the win this year. It was our culture, just it, it held us up and it had to, and it was always positive, always team first, always relationships first. So we really, um, that those are my goals coming in. Um, and so it was great to kind of see those things develop, you know, at, with our first season together. Of course, that moment that you stepped on the field as a head coach, what was that feeling like stepping on that field, that field hockey field for the first time? It's really nervous, very nervous. Um, you know, I think when you're an assistant coach, right, like you are, I always felt like I was a detail person. Like my head coach was the big picture and I was like doing the little details behind the scenes. Um, and so, you know, I think to recognize that everything that happened that day on the field was my choice. Um, that's intimidating. And I was nervous and, you know, you want to prepare your kids and you want your kids to feel confident and you want to make sure that you set up the right press and you call the right plays and that kids feel good and they feel seen and they feel confident. So I was very nervous. Um, but also proud, right? Like I'm like, there. this game has my name on it. Um, and that was an awesome feeling. Of course, being a first time head coach for field hockey, who are some of the people that you went to have advice from that are, that have been around the programs for histories? Yeah. So I've been really lucky. First of all, my, you know, head coach at Connecticut college that I played for my last three years. Um, she was great. I leaned on her a lot. I asked her a lot of advice. Um, you know, I think as I went through my first season, I had historical coaches like Don Chamberlain from Salisbury, who's won multiple national championships. Um, uh, the Shenandoah head coach, Ashley Smelter Craft, she also has reached out to me and, and they've both been fantastic mentors. Um, you know, Ashley's team was ranked 13th in the country this season. They have set all kinds of statistical records. Um, and she, that program is just, they were one of the best teams that played this year. So for, you know, coaches like Ashley and coaches like Dawn to talk to me on the phone and reach out to me and offer me guidance, um, you know, it changes everything, right? Because I think I was prepared for us to not win a lot of games this year. Um, but to have coaches tell you like, hey, you can do this, stick with it, you know, that it keeps you positive and it keeps you on track. And I think I needed that this year. And so I'm very thankful to have coaches like that who are incredibly successful and run programs that I look up to, you know, mentor me. Can you talk about, of course, the culture that you've built for the Virginia Westland program? Yeah. So, you know, I think our culture, um, you know, a big word that comes to mind for me is accountability. And I think, right, it started off with relationship building and making sure that we like love the sport and we're enjoying going to practice and that we've got relationships with each other and with coach. But, you know, I think now we're saying we want to do all these things, right? We want to be different. We want to close the, the, you know, the gaps in our games. We want to close the margin, you know, of the goals that we're letting be scored. What are we doing about it? And so, you know, my girls play pickup three times a week and they hold each other accountable. Um, and we've had some hard conversations about that. And I've had hard conversations with upperclassmen and nothing's mandatory, but it's necessary, um, especially at the division three level. So, you know, I think that's something I'm really proud of. And I think, you know, on top of the relationship building and this accountability piece is, even if we're not the best of friends, we always say like the word teammate is sacred. Like you have your teammates back and you make sure that you show up for each other. Um, so I think that's been, those few pieces have been integral to our program and to our culture. And I think if you're not talking about your culture and you're not working on your culture, there's probably a problem with your culture. And even when you think it's good and it's okay, it's, it's unfinished business always. Of course, what does a typical game day look like for you as a coach? versus your players okay so um you know I think for my girls depending if we're home or we're away you know they're going to the locker room you know at least two hours before we're getting onto the field and they're blasting music and they're dancing and they you know there's always like the hair braiders so somebody's doing everybody's hair and um you know I think that they're enjoying time together getting pumped up being silly laughing dancing um kind of getting loose um, and, you know, I think for me, right, it's 
thinking about the starting lineup, thinking about who we're playing, because on any given day, right, who are the best 11 kids that I can put out in the field? Um, and for me, I'm I'm sure, Brandon, you're getting the sense. It's like, what can I say? Um, what can I say to these girls? What can I leave them with before we get out there? Because really, think about it, the pregame speeches, right, the pregame talks, that's the last time I really get their undivided attention where they're focused. Um, Cause once they get out on the field and we're, you know, going through first touches and we're doing a huddle before they get out there, it's, you know, time is just, they're focused. It's game time. They're not, they may not even be listening to what I have to say. So I really try to be intentional with what I leave them with before we leave the locker room and go to the field. Of course, for you as a head coach, what is your game day routine and rituals look like? I really got to have coffee, Brandon. Like that's, got to have a coffee. Um, my assistant had a great idea this year and it's become a game, a pregame ritual for us is we come up with a quote. It's a quote of the game. Um, and we tell the girls, we give to the girls for game time. And we're like, this is, this is what you think about, right? When you're tired, when you're gassed, when you've got nothing left to give, if we're down by a goal, like this is what you're looking to, like this is our mantra today. Um, and it kind of grabs us. And so that's become a bit of a pregame, you know, ritual for us. As far as, you know, there's nothing, I'm not superstitious. I do wear, I've got game day sneakers that I always wear and I always have to have my cup of coffee, but that's, that's pretty much it for me. Who are some of the teams that you face each week in your conference? So we have a good, we play in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. So it's a strong conference, right? Like Shenandoah, Lynchburg, Washington, and Lee are always nationally ranked. Um, but we've got teams like Roanoke and Bridgewater and Eastern Mennonite and Ferrum. Um, and it's a competitive conference. Um, and, and, you know, I think a lot of our teams have relatively new coaches and they're trying to get better too. So, uh, we face them and typically, right. We do one conference play in September we're fall sport and then we'll do conference play, you know, in October. So the hope is right. That we've really worked out a lot of our kinks in September against non-conference. And then we focus on conference when it comes in October. What is that like, obviously, getting to ho- hoist some of those teams on your home field? Um, You know, I think this year, I could have gone without playing some ranked teams. You know, I think it's tough. I had a small roster. We field 11. I had 14. So we got very creative. You know, it's not a lot of subs. And I asked a lot of our girls. Um, But, you know, I think it was great to host them. Great to meet them. Great to see, you know, I think I so fun to watch teams like Shenandoah and Lynchburg play just their passing. And, you know, again, like they do the basics beautifully. Um, But, you know, I think that my focus as a coach and my focus when I host those teams is what is our goal today? Right. Cause it has to be a small goal. Like, what are we going to, what are we going to crush? What's our goal? You know, especially I think when you're building and growing a program and Right. I want my girls to believe they can win because I believe any team can win on any day. Um, But, you know, I think when you're playing nationally ranked programs and we're a program that's building and developing, we have to focus on the positives. So, you know, I think when hosting nationally ranked teams, it, it, you know, it has to be what is our goal as Virginia Wesleyan. So we're not focusing on, you know, holy cow, Salisbury is ranked number one in the country and we're playing them on Wednesday Um, because kids think about that stuff. Right. And it's intimidating. Of course, for my listeners that don't know, how do you play the sport of field hockey and how do you become a very great field hockey player to one day become a college field hockey player? Yeah, and I think everybody's answer is going to be different. Um, You know, I think practice, I think consistency. Um, For me, right, like I just want a kid who's athletic because I can teach the rest. And I think a kid that's coachable and adaptable and you can't, you know, I think you can't coach a good attitude. So, you know, I think that, that's something I'm mindful of in the recruiting process. Um, And, you know, I felt this way as a player and I feel even, you know, more, I feel strongly, more strongly about it now when I'm recruiting, right. And if I'm talking to recruits or I'm talking to kids who are interested in playing the sport at any level, when you mess up, what's the next thing you do? Um, Right. Because I want the kid that tackles back and hustles back and keeps themselves in the play. But you know, I don't want the kid that's body language is like, uh, or like, right. They give up on the play. So, you know, I think it's, it's talent, it's practice, it's tuning up your skills. It's all those things, but, you know, I think it's heart hustle and desire too. And those intangibles, you know, you can't coach. And so I think the kids that hustle and tune up their skills and practice hard and go above and beyond, but also 
have that desire and that heart, you know, they're, those kids are special. Of course, how has your recruiting style as a coach changed from when you were assistant coach to now as a head coach? I think I, you know, I think at right now with where, you know, our program is, I need numbers. So I think being strategic and recruiting kids who are athletic that I can develop. Um, and there might be some kids, you know, that I take that other schools who are more established you know, other programs that are more established might look over, but like, I'm looking at where can I get this kid in two or three years? Um, and can I develop them? Are they coachable and do they have potential? Um, and I will take a chance on a kid. And I think, right. I've taken chances on kids before that they do amazing things. Um, and like I said earlier, you know, I think a lot of kids, they just want to feel seen. Um, and, and if you can coach and you can tune up things and if kids are willing to do individual stuff during season, you know, I think we can get a lot of kids to the next level. I think at Salve, the program was more established, um, you know, than where we are, are right now, just competitive wise. And, you know, I think also location, right? Salve is in Rhode Island and New England is historic. And, you know, I think the best field hockey is, is up North. So, you know, I've been strategic about my recruiting and trying to get some kids from up North to, you know, give us a look. But I think, you know, it's, it's, I'm casting a wider net at Virginia Wesleyan because I think more kids know about Salve Regina and that program has been, you know, successful. So I think I just had to, had to throw out a wide, cast a wider net, if that makes sense. Of course, what does that official visit look like for those prospective student athletes coming to Virginia Wesleyan? So typically I will, you know, make sure they start their morning with me. Um, and then, you know, we'll set them up on a tour so they get to see campus. And then I will always make sure they end with our girls. So the girls will take them, you know, to the locker room, show them the field. Um, I love to get kids on campus when we're in season so they can come watch a practice. I just think to see me coach, to see the energy. Um, I can tell people about it on the phone, but I have a pretty good track record when I get kids here and they can see us in action, right? They want to be a part of it. So, you know, official visits, I think to me are all about the people. It's all about the people showing them who we are. Um, Cause I think what we've got, what we have here is special and I don't think it's everywhere. So I try my best to constantly remind them of that. As a head coach, what is that feeling like getting to see your freshman get to put on that Jersey for the first time? So Brandon, this fall will be my first recruiting class coming in as a head coach. So I've got 10 incoming. I'm hoping to get to, you know, 12 to 15 before we start our season in the fall. Um, so I'm not finished recruiting 2023s, but I am pumped. I am pumped. I can't wait to see what they do. I can't wait to get to practice. You know, it's just going to make our program so much more competitive. Um, and we've got some freshmen who are talented. Um, and I am excited to see what they can do. You know, I think they're the first stone, right? Like we're building, we are building and they're helping us lay this foundation. Um, so I can't tell you yet because it hasn't happened, but I am, I, I think about it every day. I'm so excited. Of course, what is that feeling going to feel like to see your upperclassmen put on, on that jersey, some for the last time and going on to, to their careers afterwards? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's sad. And I think we, people always said this to me as an athlete, right? You know, these four years are going to go by so fast and you don't believe it. You don't believe it. And then, right. You blink and, you know, I'm, I've been out of college for seven years. It's crazy. So, you know, I think it's, it is sad, right? Cause you know that they're about to leave something they love so much, but if I've done my job, right. I'm really proud. Cause, you know, I think as coaches, it's such a, you know, such a small percentage of our job is coaching. And the other is teaching these kids life lessons and making sure they're ready for the real world. Um, and for me too, right. Knowing that just because they're finished playing, they're always a part of this program. Um, so it's bittersweet. I think it's bittersweet. And if I've done my job and they've done their job and they've given everything they can, then they get to be proud. And, you know, I, I always feel very, very proud. Of course, what are some of your future plans for the program moving forward? I just, you know, I think starting small, like, you know, small goals, like I really would, you know, I think next year going 50%, you know, winning that, that would be huge for our program. Um, and then, you know, I think to make conference play, right, to qualify for conference, to win enough conference games that we go to the ODAX, um, you know, those are two, those are two goals for me and they're big goals, but you know, I think in the next two to three years, 
those are things I'm looking to check off. And if I'm doing my job right, we should be getting there. What advice would you give those high school athletes that are looking to play college field hockey? You know, I think that trusting your gut, you know, I think you know when you're in the right place. I think sometimes we don't listen to ourselves as well as we should. Um, and, you know, I think it's different at the Division three level, but you need to pick a school that you're the happiest at or that you could see yourself being the happiest at, you know, on the coldest, rainiest January day um, with or without your sport, right? Because you want to love your school and you want it to be a whole experience, right? Because, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure on athletes these days at every level to compete. So I think you need to pick somewhere that you enjoy and that you're going to be happy and that prioritizes you and that you know this is setting you up for success. What advice would you give those incoming freshmen that are looking to make that big impact in college field hockey? Train this summer and join leagues, play, play, play. You know, I think we get so focused, kids get so focused on fitness tests and lifting and that's just great. I'm not taking away from that at all. But um, there's nothing, you, you can't replace playing in league. Um, and, you know, I think that that's something you could sacrifice because sometimes there's not a ton of options nearby. You know, I used to drive three hours around, you know, hour and a half to Trinity College and hour and a half back just to play pickup. And it just, it changed my game. So practice in the summer, play in leagues. Um, you will, your future self will thank you. What advice would you have those college field hockey players that are looking to play professionally after their playing career? Um, you know, this is something, Brandon, I might not be as well versed to answer. You know, I think, that, you know, using your resources, using, you know, coaching staff, this is definitely, I think, division one athlete coach conversation. Um, so it's not something I particularly see at the D3 level. Um, but, you know, I think if you're that talented, you know. So leaning into it and not squandering your talent and all that good stuff. What advice would you have those assistant coaches looking to get started in coaching on the college level? Um, you know, I think now being on the other side of it and being a head coach, like this job is not easy. Um, and, you know, I think it's on days, and I say this to my assistant a lot, you know, I always appreciate her, but there are days she's going to disagree with me and she's not going to like what I'm doing. And there's days she probably wishes we could do something different or she could do something different, um, but just staying bought in and trusting the process and recognizing, right, if this is your dream career, someday, at some point, you will have your own program um, and you can learn everything from every coach you work for. So whether it's things you like, whether it's things you don't like, um, you know, the assistant coach and the head coach are a team. And so I think, you know, being a good teammate, buying in and trusting the process and just taking everything, you be a sponge, take everything you can out of that experience. What advice would you have those new head coaches that are looking to start it and building their own program just like how you are starting? And I am so new, Brandon, so I don't know if anybody would, you know, I will give the advice for how much value it has. I just tap into your resources. Anybody, you know, I be humble. I Anybody that's willing to help me out or mentor me, I am so beyond thankful um, because, you know, like I said, right, I've coached field hockey and field hockey's been my, you know, I've, I've been doing this since I was nine years old. And, you know, I walked in this position, I had no idea what I was doing. So, you know, listen to people, learn from people, be humble, be gracious, be hungry. Like you, like, you know, you and I were talking earlier about recruiting, recruit that kid, talk to that kid. Cause you never know, you know, my top, you know, some of my top recruits didn't even know Virginia Wesleyan existed. Um, but I went after him anyways, and now they're going to come play here. So, um, yeah, I just, I, like I said earlier, I'm so thankful for coaches like Dawn and Ashley and my college coach who, who look out for young women in coaching, you know, cause I think that this is a hard job. It's a hard job. So we all need to, you know, look out for each other. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the program at? Um, Instagram. So VWU, um, field hockey. Um, we also have a Facebook, Virginia Wesleyan Facebook. Um, so please follow us. We've um, we've got a young woman right now who's working on graphics and she crushes. Um, and there's all kinds of information there, Brandon. We're actually doing a first year Friday. So you can see all of our incoming kids who are coming to play, um, coming to play for us in the fall. So there's lots of good stuff going on on our social media.
Thank you again, Coach Riley Van Deer, for your interview and best luck in your future with the Virginia Westland program as the head field hockey coach. Thank you so much, Brandon. This was great. Thank you so much for having me. You. you can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Riley, for your interview and best of luck in your future. Thanks, Brandon. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.